So if something happened in our, in our living tradition, and uh, I need to take this opportunity to talk about what's going on in the National Unitarian Universalist Discourse, this month's edition of UU World included an article that purported to be about transgender and non-binary people. However, that article was, was deeply problematic and it was really hurtful to many trans and non-binary Unitarian Universalists. So I'm glad we had this opportunity to, to talk about that. So what was wrong with that article? Well, first, it was written by a cisgender woman and it centered her experience rather than the experiences of transgender and non-binary people. A cisgender person means a person whose gender identity matches their birth assigned sex. So in this case, it means that the author was born female and she identifies as a woman. Now it could be okay for a cisgender person to write about her experiences grappling with transgender identities in her family and in her church community. But the author wrote about her ignorance in a way that was not at all growth oriented. It was just kind of a series of things that she did that were hurtful to people without any sort of apology or acknowledgement that she had hurt people. Honestly, she didn't seem to be aware that she was causing pain to the people that she was interacting with in the article. So the article centered her ignorance rather than the experience of transgender people and that's a problem. It's especially a problem because this was, I think, the second article ever in UU World about anything to do with trans issues. For example, one of the people in the article has a non-binary gender identity, and they use they, then, their pronouns. Throughout the article, the author told stories of using the wrong pronoun for this person without ever acknowledging the deep pain that this causes. So by now, you all know that my <coughs> spouse, Jesse Beale, has a non-binary gender identity and uses they and their pronouns. Nothing hurts me more than to hear someone use she or her to talk about Jesse because I know how painful that is to them. So I can just imagine how the non-binary person in this article felt having the author use the wrong pronouns for them over and over and then document that in an international publication and now it is in print forever. That must have been excruciating for that person. Another issue with the article is that the author didn't have a good grasp of gender vocabulary, which again, is not the end of the world unless you're writing an article about gender. <laughs> then it's a little problematic. So the author misused terms for gender and sex, used them interchangeably, and also colluded the concepts of intersex and transgender those are two different things. It just underscores the question of why the UU world would commission an article about gender from someone who has little to no knowledge about gender. There are a number of transgender UUs, some of whom are actually gender educators that could have written a better piece for the magazine. And in fact, they asked for the opinion of a trans UU who could have done a great job and uh, Z expressed them, your concerns about the article and they went forward with it anyway. So they had road bumps along the way where they, they could have known that the article was gonna be a problem, but they pushed forward with the article as it was. So to the untrained eye, it's not easy to fully grasp all these problems. I acknowledge that. In fact, I didn't pick up on the severity of the issues during my first reading of the article. And I'm married to a trans non-binary uh, social justice educator. So it, it took reading articles from transgender and non-binary folks for me to fully understand exactly how damaging the article is. And there have been some really thoughtful and well-written responses that have explained why the original article was so hurtful and offered us suggestions on how cisgender people can be allies to any marginalized community. But many of us want to think of ourselves as being good allies or upstanders to oppressed communities, including the trans community. And that's what Daffodil Sunday is really all about. Back in 1994, the UC declared itself a hate-free zone. This was an act of compassion, bravery, and reverence for all human lives. The gentlemen who lived behind Chabak Woods were so moved by this act of allyship that they planted, I'm told, an estimated 1,000 daffodil bulbs. Daffodils are a symbol of friendship. 
And I think that symbolism is perfect. This is a story of great allyship. And allyship is really just about being a good friend to someone. That's why our choir is saying thank you for being a friend today. Allyship, it's just about being someone's friend and truly appreciating them for who they are and acting in solidarity with them. And I'm proud to be the minister of a congregation that wants to be a good ally to everybody in the LGBTQ community. But we have to remember that allyship is not a static state. It's not a one and done thing. It's also and not an identity term. It's not a thing that you are. Allyship is a verb. It's a thing that you do rather than something that you are. If we want to be allies, we must recognize the hard work that it takes. True allyship is a set of practices and behaviors. It's not a title that is earned or self-appointed. One does not simply call oneself an ally and then that is the end of it. If it were that simple, then our work would be done. And our work is not done. The most recent survey of transgender and gender non-conforming UUs conducted by Trust, which is a trans UU organization, in 2018, found that 72%, 72% of our transgender siblings do not feel as though their congregation is completely inclusive of them. And that is the bottom threshold. This number was higher for non-binary folks, it was higher for trans people of color, it was higher for young people who were trans. So clearly there is work to be done throughout our denomination, including right here at BUC. One of the most helpful response articles to that original UU World article is from the Transforming Hearts Collective. This is a group of four transgender UU religious professionals. One of the reasons I like the response is because it has 10 key practices. They are, number one, believe trans people. Number two, listen more than you talk. Number three, be willing to remain in discomfort. Number four, have hard conversations with love. Number five, value relationships over perfectionism. Six, don't expect every trans person to want to educate you, but honor those who do. Seven, stay in your heart rather than your head. Eight, don't ask a trans person anything you wouldn't ask a person who isn't trans. Nine, comfort those who are hurting and build awareness with other cisgender people. And 10, uplift transgender voices. We're gonna go through these one by one. Step one, lead trans people. I have been appalled at the amount of online discourse that is being taken up by cisgender people saying the article wasn't that bad. I understand that a person who hasn't had a lot of exposure to these issues may miss what was so upsetting about the article. What I don't understand is telling somebody who's in pain that they should not be in pain. If a trans person says that something was hurtful and you don't understand why, a better approach is to listen. Sometimes there's an opportunity to ask respectful questions. There's lots of ways you can try to understand, but just saying that you don't think what happened was bad is dismissive, and that's not how friends treat each other. Which leads us to step two, which is related. Listen more than you talk. If a person with a marginalized identity is telling you that something is offensive, listen to them to hear why. There are times when it might be okay to ask a question, but be very careful to ask respectful questions that deepen your understanding of that person's experience rather than expecting them to represent all trans and non-binary people. Step three, be willing to remain in discomfort. Being an ally sometimes means sacrificing your own comfort in order to give enough space to a person with a marginalized identity. Being willing to stay uncomfortable and remember that you're, be willing to stay uncomfortable and remember when you do so that your experience of discomfort pales in comparison to the discomfort that marginalized folks feel all the time. 72% of our trans folks do not feel supported in their churches. It's okay for you to be a little uncomfortable. Step four, have hard conversations with love. Don't shy away from difficult things. 
Be brave in your willingness to talk about the tough stuff, but do so with love. Number five, value relationships over perfectionism is a subset of step four. You must be willing to get it wrong and apologize sometimes. It's better to try to get it right and apologize when you mess up than it is to end a relationship because you're scared you're gonna do something wrong. And remember that Unitarian Universalism is a covenantal religious tradition. This means that we are bound together <laughs> even when we make mistakes, even when it's hard. Don't let perfectionism keep you from trying to be a good ally to a person with a marginalized identity. Step six. Don't expect every trans person to want to educate you, but honor those who do. It is not the job of members of an oppressed community to be ready to educate others about what their lives are like. And sometimes, members of those communities happen to be educators. You have a golden opportunity after today's service to be educated by a professional non-binary educator who just happens to be my spouse. You got a package deal, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I encourage you to stay after for the training. It's from noon to two, there's some pizza. I encourage you to stay even if you haven't registered. It's not too late, we got some really nice handouts. It's a good training. It's worth the opportunity, worth the time. Step seven, stay in your heart rather than in your head. Allyship is about building loving relationships. This work can only be done through the head, through the heart that is, not the head. It's hard to do. We're trained as highly achieving Unitarian Universalists and, and most of us white, we are trained to use our heads for everything. But that is not what builds relationships. We need to use our hearts. No friendship was ever built on intellectualism alone. Step eight, don't ask a trans person anything you wouldn't ask a person who isn't trans. There is never a reason for one person to ask another about their genitals, their hormones, or whether or not they plan to have surgery. It's nobody's business. That's all medical information, and there's no reason that you need to know about that. We laugh, but it happens. People ask questions like that all the time. Which leads us to step nine. Comfort those who are hurting and build awareness with cisgender people. Now, I realize that not all of you who are here today identify as cisgender, but if you do, it is your job as a person with privilege to be a comfort, to be a friend to transgender and gender non-conforming people. It is your job to get educated about gender so you can carry the message to other non-trans folks. And again, you can do that for free right here today from noon to two. And finally, step 10, uplift trans voices. We need to let trans people speak for themselves and name their own experiences. When we have an opportunity to promote the work of trans person, we should do that. That includes both worship materials and in everyday conversations. So again, these points come from the Transforming Hearts Collective. So you can find this resource online with an easy Google search, Transforming Hearts Collectives. These are the practices of an ally to the transgender and gender non-conforming communities. And being an ally is the very heart and soul of that Bill Sunday. BUC did an absolutely remarkable thing 24 years ago today. Well, not today, it was in October, but 24 years ago, and we honor it today by making a statement of support for the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender communities. A lot has changed since that time. We don't even say transsexual anymore, we say transgender, right? I challenge us to go the next step by being allies for transgender and gender non conforming siblings today. I want us to be a congregation where 100% of our trans and non-binary members feel supported and, and, and accepted. I want us to be that community. We are not currently that community. We can be that community. We can be that church where 100% of the trans and non-gender and gender non-conforming folks who come here feel supported and accepted. We can do that by living out these 10 points from the Transforming Heart Collective. We can also be helped in this endeavor by calling on our history and the memory of the first Daffodil Sunday so many years ago. We were on the cutting edge then, and I know that we can be on the cutting edge now. We have this skill set in our history. This is a part of our DNA. This is just a matter of just taking the next step. So let us be guided by love and our history of allyship. Let us be true friends to the entire LGBTQ spectrum. May our work be done in the name of love and friendship.